Hey there, it's Booth Owen here. I posted a video yesterday making this thing, which is a little power control circuit to run one of these. I'd made one previously with a different potentiometer and both worked to some degree. This one works better than this, but ultimately most of the components are the same on the two boards except for the potentiometer. This is the circuit that I was copying. I didn't use this bit of the circuit the extra trim pot and this circuit is basically this thing here which you can buy for a couple of quid uh, from the internet from many different outlets and I'll probably put a link to this or something similar below. I back engineered it, came up with this circuit and made it again and hey presto it worked. Oh, what a surprise! But the reason I did that, but the reason I did this and this was because I couldn't get this to work. This is a circuit from this book, Electric Motors in the Home Workshop by Jim Cox. It's a nice book and it's, it's, I've read it twice now, especially certain parts of it, uh, but it was the universal motor speed control that I was interested in. And this one has this circuit here, which I've turned the other way around, I think. If you can have a press, uh, press pause or something there if you want. Probably fall open on this page. This one here, I think. And the difference here is that instead of having the control on the neutral only, it also has a live input. But as you can see in this diagram, the live just jumps across the other three up to here. And the only difference is that there's a uh, Z1, which I track down I thought ultimately was a varistor, a 250L varistor, but this book's getting old and so some of the things aren't available and the old Maplin references are useless even though they could have been really handy if they were updated and it was only sold a year or two ago. Q2, Triac, Q1, Diac, it's basically the same circuit as the other one, as, uh, as this one, but it has this bit of I think radio interference or something. Don't know. Anyways, I built this one and I couldn't get it to work. And it's pretty well described as to how to build it. But the only thing I could conclude maybe was that uh, the input and out the gate leg of the Q2 was wrong. But then I don't think it was. So that was that. Was that. Couldn't figure that one out. I also tried to back engineer this one, which is the same as this one, but with different components different sizes of components really to make it seem beefier but it doesn't have the extra trim pot that's really the only difference it's also got one less no it hasn't it's got two capacitors they're just different types so yellow and red instead of red and red it's basically the same thing but it's got a far more substantial uh, 470k 2 watt potentiometer i can't see what that one is there but it's it's a smaller pot and i presume it it's rated for less so this one's rated for more power but they just explode anyways with Universal Motors because, as far as I can tell, there's a back EMF off Universal Motors. Reverse engineering that one gave me this. That's a BTA 41800B Triac in there. That's what it looks like. Sorry if there's flicker on that, but that's how lights work with cameras. And this one, what's this one? And then this one, okay, is this one which comes in this housing. So it's similar again, the pot, but it has this weird little DB107. You see that there? DB107 up on the top left. And that's what it looks like. And it's a single phase one amp glass passivated bridge rectifier that's dropped across across everything and it didn't make sense to me what that would do when it wasn't there but uh if you know what that is let me know because it helps me to understand things one comment is all it takes and i'll read up about it because i don't know where i'm looking to read up on it that's where we are i ultimately didn't get this one to work it maybe had the wrong size pot but i thought i built it to the spec in the book 
maybe I didn't. I think leaving out this whole part of the circuit with the uh, varistor and the capacitor and the resistor wouldn't make any difference ultimately. It was a bit pessimistic about the capacity of the tracks and I've just beefed them up with the little strips but it was a bit pessimistic about the size of the tracks because it said join the legs straight onto the spade connectors so I did that. It hasn't hasn't worked but there's no great loss. I've used recycled components and some of it but I tested what I could and we are where we are. It didn't work. I'll put these ones back together again to use them another day. I've also got spares of them. Basically it's for running a washing machine motor. I used to do that for fun, to throw bricks in them and to get them to dance on trampolines and whatnot, and if that makes no sense to you at all, just check out my other videos in the washing machine destruction playlist, because it's good fun. It's just fun on things that were going to the scrapyard. But for actually using it for an application, like driving something at a constant speed, for instance, which none of these controllers will do, none of the cheapy off-the-shelf ones will do and I don't think I haven't tried it actually but I don't think an inverter will do it a three single to three phase inverter a frequency inverter will do it they won't they won't keep these going at a constant speed because they, these don't run off the uh, frequency of the waves to keep one of these at a constant speed you have to tie into these red wires which come from a taco generator at the end of the motor and this guy does it this is one off the internet um, There's the name there, Motor Uses, I think was the eBay shop, motor.uses. Um, really neat little board, I have it on a grindstone, I'll post a link to that here. Quite a neat circuit board, quite a lot going on, but this chip in the centre is a TDA1085C chip, and that is what does all of the magic. And so you can regulate the shaft speed of the motor from 0 to 20,000 RPM, it wouldn't be 2,000 watts, it'll be up to about 3,300 in one of these. Um, it should never really be that high, but I guess you could use a different universal motor with this system based on the components. Sometimes he provides a potentiometer separate to the board, or sometimes it's on the board, depending on the listing on eBay, it seems to me, and a reversing switch on, on uh, reversing back and forward. And uh, there's some wiring diagrams there, actually, that might make that understandable. How to wire a washing machine universal motor and there's the reversing switch layout with the x across the switch what's more to say going back to this book if you understand why this circuit may not have worked and this is my interpretation of the circuit that i showed you in the book let me know in the comments even if it's years after i published the video because what's going to happen right now is these components are going to get put in a box and I'm going to move on to the next thing. This was just for tinkering. You can buy these for, for a few quid, but I just wanted to have a go. The other, maybe the last thing I'll say is that the book suggests also going from AC to DC and regulating it on the DC side. Haven't tried that. That is another option. Please, 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 with the comments, tell me about it below. Tell me what I may have done wrong. If you want a quick look at this, if it helps at all to see some idiot manoeuvre that I might have done. Apart from the dodginess of the soldering, it should have worked. Let me know about it. Check out my how to wire a washing machine motor compilation because I've described how to direct wire them in a lot of cases and I've described a little bit about speed control in some other videos. Two thumbs up. Thanks for watching. See you later.